Virginia last year. The Cats, the seventh most in the nation this year. Marshall haven't needed much offense as of late against Kentucky. The Wildcats do lead the all-time series 21-12-3, but Marshall on a three-match winning streak, and in each of those last three matches, they needed just one goal to get the job done. We'll find out more on the other side of this break. The starters when we return here on ESPN+. Plus. Fala pessoal, boa noite aí para todo mundo. Começando a partida, vou deixar soltando a transmissão um pouco mais, mas só para comentar que hoje vai ser um pouco diferente. A Marshall vai enfrentar a Kentucky e Kentucky hoje está com o brasileiro também, o Luca, Luca Rodrigues, zagueiro da Kentucky. Número 4, a Kentucky está com uma das melhores defesas do país da Índice da Boa, então vai ser legal é, acompanhar o Luca enfrentando os atletas da Marshall. Vi que tem uns parentes do Luca aqui, a Simone, o Marco, então. Boa sorte também para Kentucky, hoje eu vou ficar mais imparcial aqui, costumo torcer para Marshall nessas partidas. E a equipe de Marshall vindo com os brasileiros todos, até o Paulo hoje no ataque como titular, né? o Paulo e Lino que estão comentando aqui. Então é isso, vou deixar soltando a transmissão, acontecendo alguma coisa eu venho aqui é, comentar com vocês. Ó, a Simone é mãe do Luca, então um abraço Simone, boa sorte aí para o filho no jogo. E vamos ver, quem ganhar a gente está feliz que vai ter brasileiro ganhando e vamos acompanhar por aí, abraço também para os familiares da Marcha, o pai do Pedro da Labela, o pai do Vitor Dias, enfim, o pessoal costuma acompanhar aqui, e já daqui a pouco a gente volta para ver, mas realmente, jogo muito bom, uma das melhores defesas do país contra um dos melhores ataques do país, que é a Marcha com todos os brasileiros, então é isso, valeu galera, abraço. Boa, o Marcos me corrigiu aqui, o Luca é o número 3, não é o número 4, mas enfim, zagueiro titular de Kentucky, ele foi uma transferência, ele já jogava na D1, ele jogava na Oral Roberts University é, e transferiu para Kentucky, então é um atleta que já jogava em D1 e transferiu para uma D1 mais forte ainda, que é a Kentucky, até com o processo junto com a 2 SV também, sempre legal lembrar isso. Então vou deixar soltar no jogo, acontecendo algo, alguma dúvida, eu volto aí, é, que vença o melhor, vamos ficar na torcida. Marshall é, tá de branco e verde e Kentucky tá de preto ou azul marinho escuro. Fechado? A top 10 Valeu, galera. Boa noite para todo mundo. Bom jogo the number 10 ranked Kentucky Wildcats and the number 5 ranked Marshall Thundering Herd. We're back here live on ESPN Plus and let's meet the starting 11. First for the Kentucky Wildcats, a change on the back for UK. It'll be Rodriguez along with Screen and Grisseau, the center back, joining them. Bailey Rouse, the graduate senior from Littleton, Colorado. Three midfielders for 10th year head coach Johan Settergren. So Ryda in the middle, he'll be joined along with Wheeler. And the center mid, Marcel Meinzer, the senior from Herxheim, Germany. Three up front as well for Kentucky. Mason Visconti along 
with Luke Andrews. Joining them, a change to the lineup. Ben Damji, the sophomore from Mason, Ohio. And in the net this evening for Kentucky, Jan Hoffelner, the graduate senior from Langen, Germany. Transfer from St. John's was the 2019 Co-Big East Keeper of the Year. You see his numbers there, 10 saves, just one goal allowed in 460 minutes of action in the net for Marshall. No change from last match for fifth-year gaffer Chris Grassi. It'll be Alves, Masayunas, Dos Santos, and Linehos along the back with Fernandez, Schneider, Dolabella in the middle. The three-striker approach for Chris Grassi in the herd. Vitor Diaz, Milo Yosef, the center forward, and Paolo Lino, the freshman. And in goal this evening as he has been majority of the year. The senior, Ali Simla, faced 64 shots on the season. Simla, a 1.58 goals against average, 655 save percentage, coming off his second clean sheet of the year. Marshalls. Gaffer Chris Grassi, two-time Conference USA Coach of the Year on the opposite side of things. The only man that's won the Conference Coach of the Year honors more than Grassi, and that's Johan Sedergren in his 10th season. Our man in charge, Estebano Rosano, blows his whistle, and we are off and running in Huntington, West Virginia. Fans continue to file into the facilities here expecting a very large turnout this evening for the 37th meeting between Kentucky and Marshall, both in the vertical stripes, Kentucky in the road black and Kentucky blue, Marshall in the Kelly green and white. Both enter off wins, both enter off clean sheets. Linehouse with it, surveys, plays it forward to Yosef. Marshall, the third highest scoring club so far this year, as we touched on in our open. The 20 goals, the most through seven matches under Chris Grassi in his fifth season at the helm of Marshall men's soccer. Diaz, no look, able to flick it back to Yosef, and it's cleared away by the Wildcats. Defense has been a strong suit for Kentucky. They've only conceded two goals all year. The Wildcats have played down a goal once all season, a come-from-behind victory back on September 12th against Duquesne. We're at the Wendell and Vicky Bell soccer complex in Lexington, Kentucky. The Bell, as it's affectionately called, Flicked on ahead from Fernandez looking for Alves and Rosano blows his whistle. Alves is still down. Marshall have won the free kick. Look here at the replay. Fernandez just tried to flick it back on. And Rodriguez, the graduate senior transfer from Oral Roberts, colliding with him there. So Diaz and Linehost will chat about this. Vitor Diaz. Tallied a goal and an assist. The 2020 Conference Player of the Year. Tied for sixth in Marshall history in career assists with 15. One more will move him into a three-way tie for fourth. Back to Masayunas now and through to Diaz. Screen will move forward to mark him. Now they'll swing it to the far side. Marshall changing the angle of attack. Thundering Herd always content to try to generate attacks from the back. Dolabella had it. Pedro Dolabella, a five-match point streak is what he enters this contest on. Now out of nothing, a counterattack for Kentucky. 
Andrews has it far side. Now they'll swing it back to Rouse. Bailey Rouse, one of the captains, the graduate senior. Second most minutes played on Kentucky a season ago in the spring. Has started 56 of his last 57 appearances. Now his third career appearance against Marshall. Out for a Wildcat throw. Screen will toss it in. Schneider will meet that with the head, and it's out. Wildcats will have another throw, this time further down the pitch. Intercepted by Marshall and hoofed away there by Alves. Grisso, the junior from Germany, comes up with that and tries to play it back ahead. No such luck for Kentucky. Marshall back on, and it's Alves. Marshall looking to break out now. Line host with it as the crowd has settled to a near hush, and no sooner than I say that, the drums beat again. picked up the win against Akron here on Tuesday evening. Another ranked team, the Thundering Herd, have downed. Zips were 20th in the nation as Fernandez tries to win that back, and it's off the boots of Fernandez. Wildcats will have the throw in. Marshall now 19 wins when scoring two or more goals under Chris Grassy in their last three full campaigns. Alves swings past Sarida. Now into the middle. Fernandez goes down. A collision with Sarida. And he is not a happy man. The freshman from Jessheim, Norway, in the starting 11 for the first time since September 12th. And that one, excuse me, 3-1 win, I should say, against Duquesne. Alves will flick it to the far side of the box, way far away. Yosef will track it down. Now Linehouse. Chipped around one defender and a shot sent toward goal. And it's wide of the far post. An early chance for Jan Eric Linehos. A look at the replay. Just unable to, unable to take this chance. A nice little flick around the defender, and it's wide there of that post. Good read on it. Hoffelner lunging for it. Hoffelner ranks second in the NCAA in goals against average. will carry him back to Simla and Simla will roll it out to the far side able to find Colin Masayunas Masayunas has played every minute in four straight appearances and we'll swing it to Alves on the near side Thundering Herd in that 2-0 win against Akron they won the possession battle 55-45 it's the sixth straight match that Marshall have won the battle for possession in fact the Herd have outpossessed eight of their last nine opponents Six, one, and one in those eight matches in which Marshall wins the possession numbers. And that is really what Marshall's head man in charge, Chris Grassy, looks at. He said it in his press conference after Marshall won against North Carolina in the national semifinals in the College Cup back in the spring. Marshall had one shot. All match, one shot on goal. We're heavily outshot by the Tar Heels, but they outpossess North Carolina by nearly 20%, in fact, over. And Grassy said that. He said, it's not about, it's about capitalizing on the one opportunity you have 
And it's about the fact we outpossessed them and ran them ragged. Then Clay Yosef threw a good counter-attacking chance here for Marshall. Collision in front of the net, and it's played wide of goal and cleared away. Hoffelner is down. Marshall had several green and white shirts streaking toward goal. Forced a clearance from Kentucky. The herd will have a throw in. We'll look here at the replay. Hoffelner hanging in there as pressure bearing down on him. Maybe to walk that one off. Alves will have the throw in from this near side for Marshall. Take a look at keys and storylines to victory. First, first for Kentucky. You have to believe you're made for this moment. UK's veteran-laden bunch includes 13 seniors, but this is the highest-ranked club they face this year. Could a larger, hostile crowd come into play? As mentioned, fans still continue to file in here at Hoops Family Field. Marshall expecting a large crowd, the largest crowd Kentucky's played in front of this year. 1,679 at Louisville when they won over their in-state rivals, 3-1 a handful of matches ago. And for the Wildcats, it starts from the back. The UK have started the same four at the back. Screen, Grisso, Rodriguez, and Jewel. That comes to an end in this match with the changes made by Settergren. Pre Dias in toward goal. But it still does start from the back, even with changes on that back line. Grisso said earlier this year, quote, it starts with us. It starts from the back. Our defending has been great. Luca Rodriguez said, we've been good, but we have to humble ourselves. This is a big match. For Marshall, much of the same. Finish in the final third. After that 2-2 draw against West Virginia, Chris Grassi said, quote, we have to finish, and in the future we will. It will go in just like the national final against Indiana. They outshot Akron 7-2 on frame to the Thundering Herd, and they had some really good chances in the 14th and 28th minutes that were saved. Grassy said after the Akron win, quote, it's important for us to stay mentally focused. And for Marshall, you have to limit chances. We talked about this in our last broadcast. The 10 goals given up through six matches, the most under Chris Grassy. Did keep the sheet clean against the Zips, but Chris Grassy said after the Akron match, quote, the Zips had three or four chances that they could have had pretty good goals. Have to continue to limit chances against a dangerous Wildcat team as the throw in intercepted. A low shot put on goal, blocked away. It was screen applying that. And now Alves will flick it away. Volleyed back toward Marshall's defense by Rodriguez. Neither team able to settle on it. And now finally the Wildcats do. Play back to Grisso. Grisso. Two assists against Wright State earlier this year. Now his 12th straight start for the junior from Munich, Germany. Andrews went down, wanted a call, and they'll guide it back to Simla. Screen again with it. And now Dolabella able to swim past one defender, and he'll just hoof it downfield. Yosef will get chase. Some options here going forward for Milo Yosef, and he takes those options. It works its way back to Jan Eric Leinhos, and a misplay off the back by line hosts of Max Schneider, defensive mid. Diaz weaving through the midfield. Now back to Diaz again. Nice move to get past Sarida and cleared away once again by Grisso. Dan G will give chase. Wildcats moved up from 14 to 10 in the latest United Soccer Coaches Top 25. Marshall also moved up a spot from 6 to 5. Santos ahead to Alves. 
taking it wide again, trying to play back into the middle by Yosef off the back heel. Intercepted by Andrews as Marshall supporters wanted a handball. Won't get that, will the herd. And in fact, Kentucky will be awarded a free kick. here at the replay of the foul. And Mr. Santos just tied up there with Luke Andrews. Quick whistle from Estebano Lozano. Kevin Fiker and Andre Castile, the assistant referees this evening. Van Gaston, the alternate in the substitution area. Wildcats projected in the Conference USA preseason poll to finish third behind Marshall, who was projected to win the league in Charlotte. 49ers off to somewhat of a disappointing 4-2-0 start for their fall campaign. A good chance here for University of Kentucky. Wildcats unable to take it initially, and then a shot put on from point-blank range. Simla stonewalls the man in Sarida. And Marshall able to clear the lines. Breathe a sigh of relief. Can the thundering her? Diaz goes down. Won't get a whistle there. It was Meinzer that collided with him. But a good challenge put on by the senior. Marcel Meinzer, 52 starts in his last 53 appearances. He has been a common name in the Kentucky lineup. The last handful of years, they tried to flick one into the box, and the offside flag was up from Kevin Fiker. Marshall had great success as of late in this series. Since 2017, when Marshall's coach Chris Grassy got here, the Herd have five wins in the seven matches played against Kentucky. Every single one of those five wins has been 1-0. It's been close. In fact, all seven of those previous seven have finished in 1-0 decisions. Santos will survey. Dating back to 2018, Kentucky have a less than stellar record against ranked clubs, six, seven, and three since 2018 against teams ranked in the top 25. They have outscored those clubs though, 18-14. However, they've dropped six of their last eight fixtures to ranked foes, and they've been shut out five times in that span. Looking to reverse some of that bad luck here in this one. They play it out wide to Yosef. Yosef looking to go back through to Diaz. Muscled off the ball. Good defending. And Kentucky will win it back again. Grosseau. Down goes a Wildcat, and it's the captain, Rouse. In fact, that was actually Marcel Meinzer. Meinzer gives it up to the other captain, Bailey Rouse, and we're back underway after the free kick. Each team has had a pair of shots. Wildcats have only had one shot on goal. It's the match's only shot on goal. Rowan goes to Diaz. I found this quite interesting. Marshall have allowed, as mentioned, 10 goals 
Through seven matches this season as Alves will flick one in right to the boot of Dolabella, the outstretched right foot. Couldn't settle that, and he was cleared away smartly by Bailey Rouse. Those 10 goals allowed through seven matches are the most for a defending national champ through their first seven since Maryland allowed eight through their first seven matches back in 2019. As we take a look at the replay, a pinpoint pass from Alvis whipped into a dangerous area. They throw it back in, and Kentucky will win it back. Wildcats will have a free kick. Hoffelner has really been around, as mentioned, transferred from St. John's of the Big East. He actually began his Division I career at Presbyterian. Now with his third D1 club in his free COVID years, they refer to it as Diaz turns on the ball, and now Marshall moving forward with it through the midfield. Ahead to Yosef, and Yosef telegraphed that move. Visconti stuck the foot in, cut that out. Heard will have the throw. Finds Yosef off the throw in. Again, Visconti, the transfer from Clemson, able to disrupt that. Clearance blocked off the pad, the shin pads, that is, of Vitor Diaz. The dense cloud cover earlier in the afternoon and the morning has really given way to Quite a beautiful evening here in Huntington, West Virginia. It's good football weather. Temperature never even ro rose above 70 degrees today. Real sign of the changing seasons here in the Appalachian region. Marshall back on it. Played over from Dos Santos. One center back to the other in Masa Yunus. Visconti will throw it in. His third start and five appearances this season. Rodriguez with it now. Rodriguez. Three goals in his career, club career, for EC Sao Bento U-17s of Serie D in Brazil. A chance for Kentucky developing nicely here, progressing into the final third. And again, Marshall able to clear it away. Colin Masayunas having a spirited discussion with our assistant referee, Kevin Fiker, on this near side. Wildcats will throw it in. It'll be Rodriguez as a second team all Summit League selection back in 2019 with the Eagles of Oral Roberts. Throw in intercepted by Marshall. Lino on it now. Sarita again with it. Turned away from goal by Dos Santos. A probing ball finds its way through, and Diaz goes down on the clearance attempt, and that will be a free kick for Marshall. Kentucky starting to knock on the door of the final third. Trying to find the match's opening strike. Doing so and also beating Marshall here at Hoops Family Field will be a tall task for Kentucky. Hoops has turned into quite the fortress for Marshall. 12th 
highest home winning percentage since 2017 as Sarida intercepts and Yosef overruns him. Sarida very displeased with just a free kick given. Those two clattering together as we see the replay. And Yosef there just sticking out the right foot, that bright yellow highlighter boot of his and tripping up Sarida. A 7-14 win percentage for Marshall here at Hoops Family Field, dating all the way back to 2017, 12th highest as mentioned. Marshall have not lost at Hoops Family Field in 739 consecutive days, 15 consecutive results. That includes wins and draws. I have not outright lost since 2019 and it's University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. Yet to see Itor Bjorgolfsson for Kentucky. Seven points in his last four appearances for the junior striker from Jessheim, Norway. And now Kentucky, a midfield interception. Wildcats back on it now. Asking questions of this Marshall defense. Forward to screen. And now flicked in toward the box where Simla will come out and make the grab. Had Damji crashing in on him. Damji, the sophomore from Mason, Ohio. 38 minutes last match against Western Michigan for Ben Damji. <laughs> 25 minutes gone here in this opening half. Only one shot on goal combined for both sides. It's been taken by the Wildcats. Still in that feeling out process. Linehouse give and go from Yosef back to him and runs out of space, pushes it a little far ahead of him. And we will have a trifecta of changes made by Sedergren and this staff. Daniel Evans will come on for Kentucky, as will Brock Lindau. And Robert Maurice, the sophomore from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I really just wanted to say that one time in this broadcast. That's such a fun hometown. <laughs> Dos Santos will give Chase all the way back towards Simla. He'll play it to his sweeper keeper, as they call it. And now forward to the far side, line host into the middle to Schneider. It's Max Schneider and Jan Eric Linehost wearing the captain's armbands this evening for Marshall. Dumped out of play by Kentucky. Line host will watch it carry him out. And that is where Marshall will have the throw. Neither side budging an inch early on in this. Both back lines have been strong. Kentucky, though, have had a handful more chances at goal than Marshall. Santos back to Masi Yunus. Those two trading possession back and forth several times before Masi Yunus carrying it forward. Dolabella played through. Now flick to the far edge of the box on the near side. It's Fernandez who scored the match winner last year in Lexington for Marshall in a rain soaked match. Cleared away from danger. Line hosts wanted to play it back to the middle, and I believe that was Brock Lindau who scored the match winner against Western Michigan, clearing that out. Lindau said after that 1-0 home win against Western Michigan last Sunday as Yosef taking it tight on the end line and dispossessed and then committing the foul as Milo Yosef. Lindau said after that 1-0 victory, quote, we started on the wrong foot 
but came back in the second half. We regrouped, and we did a good job. As Estebano Rosano will call Milo Yosef all the way back and have a strongly worded discussion with him. We take a look here at the foul, and again, you see Yosef sticking that right foot out, tripping up the man, and then a little extracurricular after the play. Looks like the Kentucky player took exception to Yosef stepping over him or trying to play the ball as he was down. So a free kick awarded to Kentucky. It's volleyed away by Marshall. Just, just the third venture away from the friendly confines of the Bell in Lexington for Kentucky. Dating back to 2016, the Wildcats 17, 13, and 7 away from friendly confines. In that span, 1-1-5 one, one, and five against ranked foes. As Yosef has won the throw in for Marshall on the far side. retreating with it now and Dos Santos will swing it to this near side Alves he'll survey if the move to try to shake free of Sarida good recovery there by Meinzer forced Alves to go back with it and now Marshall goes back again this time to their keeper Hernandez nudges it forward leaves it off for Dolabella and we have a handball against Pedro Dolabella off the carom. And that will bring Chris Grassi to his feet on the Marshall side of things. These coaches, they have long, long memories. Chris Grassi remembers earlier in this match as we see the replay. And it's like maybe off the face before the hand and then off the hand as Fernandez goes down. Much the dismay of Kentucky, but as I was saying, these coaches, don't be fooled, they have long memories. Coach Grassi for Marshall remembers in the early goings of this match and when he wanted a handball on Kentucky, and then the Wildcats get one on Marshall, and that immediately shot Grassi up to the turf. Look here at the replay, a screen colliding with Fernandez. Vinicius Fernandez enters this contest ranked 14th in the nation in total goals scored this season. Six points for Fernandez in his last 13 league outings. And now able to win a free kick and put Marshall perhaps in scoring position here. Not out of the question, this within striking distance. Third scored off a set piece against West Virginia two matches ago as they flick it to the far side of the box. No one there except for a Wildcat who heads it away. Good run from Fernandez to win it back. Dolabella, ball whipped into a dangerous area and it collides with screen in front of goal. No one there for Marshall, but nonetheless a good chance for the Herd. As Jan Hoffelner able to come out and end that chance for Marshall. Now look here at it again. Dolabella whipping that one in toward the six. Schneider, I think maybe just briefly made contact with it on his run toward goal.
or trying to develop something. And again, Kentucky's defending comes up big. That time it's Grisseau using the body positioning to block Linehouse off from the ball on a ball through. And we'll give a goal kick to Hoffelner and the Wildcats. Joseph with it now, surveys. They'll leave it off for Fernandez. Thundering Heard bunching up there in the middle, but now able to break free. Ahead, Fernandez, excuse me, that's Alve, swims past one defender in screen, and screen, strong challenge, able to win it back. Now flicked ahead to Daniel Evans. Evans, the Wildcats 2019 leading scorer. Evans again curls through, and Evans goes down. Ball is live at the top of the box. Cleared away, I believe, but it will be a free kick, if I'm not mistaken. Ali Simla will come out to take this. We see the replay of Alves on the opposite end, swinging past one, two defenders, and then just a hard, strong challenge there from Robert Screen. On the opposite end, it was Daniel Evans colliding with a Marshall player. That brought Johan Sedergren up to have a conversation with Van Gaston, the alternate referee. Play does resume. We've played over a half hour in this contest. Still no score. And since Kentucky took the first shot on cage of this match, there have been no shots on frame. Volley back into the middle from Dolabella. Diaz has it. Overrun there by Marise. Marie's member of the 2020 Conference USA freshman team. 18 appearances for the Wildcats in the spring. Good defending there on Vitor Diaz. Now screen surveys. Forward finds Lindau. Had a man on the overlap. Tries to play it through the middle to Daniel Evans, the Texan. And Gabriel Alves takes the bump on the clearance. Thought that was a foul. Official disagrees, and Wildcats will have a throw in on this near side. Daniel Evans mentioned his name. He back in the squad for the first time since September 3rd, home against Notre Dame. They tried to find Evans again, and again it's Alves this time. Attempting the clearance, and this time able to deflect it off the spikes on the bottom of the boot of Evans. And Evans just boots it away. Excuse me, that was Alves, I should say. Marshall were trapped deep in that defensive third. Finally able to clear the lines and break out a bit. Take some pressure off those four along the back. See the frustration of Alves in the 16 shirt there at the bottom of your screen. No options to go forward with it. Stuck his hands out out of frustration. What do you want me to do? Essentially is what the body language says. Kentucky have done a decent job here. That's sort of underselling it. Kentucky have done a good job here of congesting passing lanes and not allowing much. Marshall have done equally as good of a job on the other side. Back to Alves as he'll curl around. Fernandez, nowhere to go with it. Clay Holstad, the senior from Birmingham, Alabama, subbed in minutes ago, making that defensive play. Back to Yosef, far side. Now back to line host. Again. Black and blue shirts converge. Yosef just tries to use the speed and the finesse to weave through. Does successfully, and it works its way over to Alves near side. Could this be something here for the herd? Alves on the overlap, and a good defensive read by Rodriguez. Beat him to the ball, and that will be a goal kick for Kentucky.
Just two goals allowed through their first six fixtures for the Wildcats. Touched on that in our open. That's the fewest through six dating back to 2018. Those two goals allowed are also tied for the fewest through six matches to open a campaign in program history. The 2018 squad did it prior to that. The 2006 squad allowed just two through six matches under then head coach Ian Collins. They finished that year going 14-5-2, but they missed the NCAA tournament after losing in the first round of their conference tournament to Tulsa that year. As Rouse will swing it near side, able to find Rodriguez. Rodriguez made 11 appearances in the spring, and now Evans juggles with it and flicks it onto the near side. That's where Gabriel Alves will clear it away. Meeting it is Rodriguez, and again, the Wildcats back on it here. And the whistle will bring things to a stoppage. Looks as though a handball again on Pedro Dolabella. The second time Dolabella has been whistled for that. We see it here. Settled with the chest there of Marie's in the black and blue shirt. Just hard to tell from that angle. Screen goes with the ground cross, tries to play one through. A good ball finds its way over to Grasso. It's live in front of Simla. And Yosef able to back heel it away from danger. The pressure lives for Kentucky. And Marie's just unable to take that touch from the far side of the box. Marshall bailed out there. The ball live in front of Simla, deflected off a couple players. But that was a good ball played through that found its way. I believe that was Luis Grosso, the junior from Germany, coming up there. First shot for either side in quite some time. Wildcats three shots, Marshall two. Neither side have been able to capitalize. Still nil-nil here. As we close in on the halftime intermission at Hoops Family Field, we'll take a look at stats and highlights during our intermission report. At the moment now, it's Marshall back on it. Diaz, Diaz had it, I should say. Played back to Fernandez. Yosef given up to Jan Eric Linehos. Back to Linehos. They'll swing it near side. Poor pass from Dos Santos. And sliding in, just diving in. A dangerous challenge as Clay Holstad went diving to the turf. Holstad is up, got up very quickly. We take a look here. Dos Santos tried to play it back to Alves. And the pass, just not enough weight behind it. It allowed Holstad to step up with the interception, and you see the replay there of it. And a yellow card is shown. Question is, who is that yellow on, though? Rosano sort of just gestured nondescriptly to an empty area and held the yellow up. Someone goes into the book. Wildcats able to take the free kick. Evans will just gently guide it back to Meinzer, the captain. Meinzer comes up a little lame. Screen will cross it in. Visconti deflected off of him. And now we have another whistle for a stoppage from Rosano. The yellow... In the 50, or excuse me, 42nd minute, I should say, shown to Nathan Dos Santos. There were some questions after Vitor Diaz and Pedro Dolabella were conversing with Rosano, but it is officially on Dos Santos, so first booking of this match. Meanwhile, around Conference USA, as this is not the only conference match, South Carolina at Charlotte at the intermission break, the 49ers all over 
the Gamecocks and their first year skipper, Troy Ennin. 2 0 lead for the 49ers at the break. With Dominion and Florida Atlantic and Boca Raton also got underway at 7 Eastern time. It's a busy Saturday evening and afternoon for fixtures across the nation. 70, in fact. 14 ranked teams in action. However, none bigger a match than this right here. A top 10 battle. The only other match featuring two ranked teams this evening. Number 15, Pitt at number two, Clemson. In fact, speaking of that Old Dominion Florida Atlantic match, the Owls up 1 0 on the Monarchs through 45 minutes. That match also just entered the intermission. Fernandez will weave through. Marshall's leading scorer, Vinicius Fernandez, five goals, four assists. Flag will come up. They had Paolo Lino through, and Lino a little too eager there to get on toward goal. We enter the 44th minute from Hoops Family Field. What will that man say to his club as they enter the halftime dressing room? Chris Grassy. Both sides will look to impose themselves in the second set of 45 minutes. Just five combined shots, one on goal. It lies with the Wildcats. Marshall will have the throw far side. Dolabella had it tied up between his legs and pushed it a little far in front of himself. Rodriguez will win it back. The Wildcats racing forward, hounding Rodriguez is Dolabella, and Kentucky will have a throw in the late stages, very late stages of half number one. Rodriguez will chuck it in from the near side. This will likely be the last chance for either team, and that is how half number one will end. A hard-fought 45 minutes, and Huntington, West Virginia, sees just five shots fired on goal. Only one actually counts as a shot on frame. Nil-nil through 45 minutes of play. We'll be back here on ESPN Plus for the start of our intermission report. Don't go anywhere. Boa galera, final de primeiro tempo, vou deixar rodando a transmissão que eles fazem é, melhores momentos, enfim, mas jogo bem como a gente estava esperando, Marshall com a bola, controlando o jogo, mas Kentucky foi muito mais é, perigosa, teve aquela chance na cara do gol, que não tinha como ter perdido aquela chance, o goleiro alemão foi bem que nem pulou, né? ele abriu o peito na frente, mas é isso, Kentucky mais perigosa e Marshall controlando a posse de bola. Tava até, ia ver se ia falar com o Rafa para ele vir comentar, só que ele tá no jogo. E só para deixar um aviso também, é, o Luca muito bem na zaga. Teve até um lance curioso no início, né, que tem o desentendimento ali do Luca com o Gabriel. Gabriel da Marshall, lateral esquerdo. Para quem não sabe, os dois jogaram juntos no São Bento. Então eles se conhecem, jogaram Liga Semiprofissional agora, a NPSL, na mesma equipe. Então eles são amigos, mas o Luca chegou um pouco mais forte querendo chegar na bola, mas o corpo do Gabriel estava na frente. Aí o Vitor Dias ainda chegou lá, deu um empurrão no Luca, não sei se eles se conheciam ou não. Então teve esse lance curioso, mas são amigos, tiraram foto antes do jogo, enfim. 
é, se conhece. Acho que a família do Luca conhece o Gabriel também. Então, é, lance de jogo. E também, galera, só para dar um aviso, até soltar aqui na tela rapidão. Peraí, que eu vou soltar aqui na tela antes. antes melhor... Só para falar, galera, que agora 9 horas do Brasil, daqui 3 minutos, vai ter um jogo do Lakeland United contra o Florida Premier. É, o time do Lakeland é do coach Tawan, coach muito bom. A gente tem atletas jogando lá, o Matias, o Thiago, a gente tem mais atletas que vão para lá jogar o Sub-23. Então, para quem está aqui, que está com essa, com essa vontade de jogar nos Estados Unidos, que viu a minha live com o Tawan, assiste também o jogo do Lakeland, abre as duas telas ali, enfim... É, se vira para dividir a atenção, mas é importante ver esse jogo. Eles estão com uma transmissão profissional, por eles estarem primeiro da divisão da Flórida, uma empresa especializada em transmitir os jogos, é, se ofereceu a transmitir os jogos deles, então esse jogo hoje vai ser muito bom. Vou colocar o link dele aqui nos comentários, fechado? Então, começa 9 horas, a gente não vai poder transmitir, porque já está sendo transmitido por lá, mas é, recomendo que vocês assistam e acabando esse jogo, Vai para o jogo de lá, vou botar o link aqui. E aí eu acho que eles vão mostrar os melhores momentos agora. Vou soltar aqui correndo. Espera aí. Kentucky possessed it 17%. Eles estavam mostrando os dados. Marshall com mais posse de bola, quase 70% de posse de bola. E Kentucky com mais chutes ao gol. Então, o jogo está isso. Marshall muito mais controlando a, bo a bola. É, com os brasileiros, enfim, Vitor Dias consegue segurar a bola muito bem. Pedro Abela tem muita qualidade no passe, fazendo a virada de jogo. Né? A bola cruzada para o ponta. O Vini também jogando muito bem ali, segurando muito bem a bola no ataque, o Gabriel muito bom também. Só que Kentucky está mais vertical, pega a bola e vai para frente, que é o jogo deles, é o jogo que tem dado certo. O cara falou na transmissão também, é legal é, falar isso, Kentucky só sofreu dois gols na temporada, então o Luca, que é zagueiro, está fazendo um trabalho muito bem, e a Marshall está entre as mais ofensivas, as que mais fizeram gols, então de novo. Tá um ataque contra a defesa ali com a posse de bola e tá dando 0x0. Zero zero. Então ninguém ainda conseguiu sobressair com isso. E ele falou que vai soltar os melhores momentos daqui a pouco, então eu vou deixar rodando aqui. E vou colocar nos comentários aqui o link do jogo da, do Lakeland, do Tawan. Peraí que eu falei muito aqui, fiquei até sem ar um pouco. Tava só vendo se já começou, mas ainda não. Mas vou colocar nos comentários, quem quiser assistir, bota duas telas aí, separa no meio. Acabou de acabar o jogo do Corinthians, 2x1, ganhamos também, então pode parar o Globo Esporte ali, assiste só a transmissão da Marshall e a transmissão do Lakeland por ali, vou deixar rodando por aqui. Já já eu volto, valeu! Alumni Weekend here at Hoops Family Field. We would like all men's soccer alumni and coaches to please stand up. We thank you for your contributions to the program throughout the years. Let's give them a round of applause. The Marshall Man Act is the largest instructor organization on campus with benefits to both students and performing athletes. Members who receive a Maniac shirt, football season tickets, and many local discounts. The Marshall Maniacs have an opportunity this season to make history by having record numbers at each sporting event. Visit the Maniacs button on Herdzone.com for online sign up or visit the University Bookstore for more information and go Herd. Marshall fans want to keep up with the latest results, stories, and stats for the funding Herd. Herdzone.com is the official website of the Marshall Athletics. Visit now for the most up to date information on your favorite funding Herd athletes and teams. Fans are looking to be part of all the action and everything Marshall Athletics. Want to earn rewards for coming to the game all night? You can. Download our game day app to keep you connected to what's happening while the game or watching from home. Download Herds with the app store for Google Play today. 
Bates just reminded that there is no standing room on the east and west side of the field behind the goal. Galera, e eles estão mostrando a bola aí, eu tô escutando por causa do áudio, mas isso é legal saber, principalmente para quem quer jogar lá. Nos intervalos dos jogos, tem ação com torcida, enfim, sei lá, desafio de travessão, coisa que o americano valoriza muito. Então, provavelmente a ESPN não pode transmitir, eles deixaram aí filmando a bola, mas dá para ver que o narrador tá falando alguma coisa da torcida, enfim, deve estar algum show. Então, isso no universitário é muito forte também, é, o americano sempre preza muito pelo espetáculo, é o que a gente fala, às vezes você vai assistir um jogo da NBA muito mais pelo espetáculo do que o jogo. O jogo americano pouco importa, tá lá gritando, gol, Marshall, mas ele tá lá mais pelo evento. Então é legal ver isso no college também. Então eles estão filmando a bola, mas tá acontecendo alguma coisa aqui no campo de evento no halftime, né? No, no intervalo. E o jogo do Lakeland tá começando a apresentação. Vou até. Deixa eu compartilhar aqui rapidinho o início do jogo. Só para o pessoal ver a estrutura, enfim, a transmissão bem fera que eles conseguiram. A câmera está meio torta, mas está bem legal. Espera aí. That was America the Beautiful, sang by Sabrina Smith. She's a freshman in high school and she sings with Entertainment Review in Tampa. In the alt Aí, eles estão no inicial, né? Mesmo, mesmo procedimento do, do college. O Lakeland é o time de preto, que está na direita. E o time de branco é o Florida Premier. É, tem uma menina que é do high school que está cantando o hino. Então, também tem essa parte de, de espetáculo e tudo mais. Então, vou deixar só esse comecinho, porque ele não está mostrando nada do jogo da marcha. Já, já eu volto. Once again, that was Sabrina Smith singing our national anthem. Freshman in high school. And she sings with the Entertainment Review out of Tampa and, and Ultimate Dance Center in Lakeland. The starting lineup is Tiepo. He's starting up top, Yamas on the left-hand side, Chiti in the middle, Villa. Ó, oh, galera, o time titular do Lakeland é o number, Matias Chepo, é, brasileiro. Right Ali o número 10, o Alex Carano, Andreo, brasileiro. O número 20 também é brasileiro. Right back, Lina, e eu acho que o número 8 é brasileiro também. Back, tá voltando aqui o jogo Fomin, da marcha, eu vou voltar, mas... Torcendo Maldonado, aqui pelo Lakeland, boa sorte, Tauan, boa sorte, Matias. Sampaio, e os brasileiros que estão por lá também. Wang, Vamos voltar aqui pro jogo da marcha. E Through the shots with seven points, Kentucky, Marshall, Old Dominion, and Florida Atlantic find themselves in a four way tie for second. All four of those clubs have played to draws with Coastal Carolina behind them FIU, Charlotte, UAB, and South Carolina. This is not a live league table at the moment. If this result holds here, both Marshall and Kentucky would earn another point each with two. Charlotte would pick up three points, as would Florida Atlantic, and that would move FAU into sole possession of second, Charlotte into third. Marshall and Kentucky would be tied for fifth. FIU tumbled down the latest polls following their loss to now-ranked Bowling Green. The Panthers 
Aí, galera, eles estão mostrando a tabela, como eu falei, agora começou a conferência. Então, já conta o ponto, já conta três pontos de vitória. Eles rebound com um 6-0 beat down é o primeiro jogo da Marshall de Kentucky, mas eles nos mostraram que Costa Carolina já jogou três jogos. Então, é, depende do calendário de cada faculdade. Então, o então, um empate é bom entre as três das duas equipes, que elas vão subir na tabela, mas ainda tem muita coisa para acontecer. Essa é uma das conferências mais disputadas dos Estados Unidos. Their best forte, since 2019, forte, when they opened 5-0-2. Então, and speaking é, of the United Soccer difícil, Coaches então, Bowl, we see vale our top 10 nationally. Já. Georgetown, the 2019 Fechado. champions, find themselves back up at the top. Marshall, after that early season loss to Virginia Tech, fell down the polls a touch. Indiana, who was briefly number one, they have completely fallen out of the top 25 receiving votes are the Hoosiers as are the Tar Heels of North Carolina but Clemson Washington West Virginia and Marshall West Virginia took down St Bonaventure at Dick Delec Stadium earlier this afternoon a pair of wins this week for West Virginia the question becomes though with those two teams playing to a 2-2 draw here in Huntington two matches ago should Marshall come out victorious this evening they would have wins against two top 20 teams in a week span, whereas West Virginia played Dayton in a rain-soaked match at Dick Delec and also St. Bonaventure, both of those clubs unranked. So would Marshall should, again, this is pending tonight's result, should Marshall knock off their second-ranked club in a week span? Would the Thundering Herd, would that be enough to leapfrog Marshall over West Virginia? even though they both 2-0-0 this week. Duke 6, Maryland 7, Maryland, the 2018 champions. Behind them, Tulsa, former member of Conference USA, New Hampshire, and then the Wildcats of Kentucky. Touched on it a handful of times in that opening half. Marshall expecting a good crowd here this evening. You see there on the far side, standing room only, as we'll head to break and wrap up our intermission report here on ESPN Plus. The second half, when we return. Vai começar já o segundo tempo, galera. O áudio foi da própria transmissão que caiu um pouco, deve voltar daqui a pouco. E aí, acontecendo alguma coisa, algum lance importante, eu volto para a gente comentar, fechado? Vou soltar bem a transmissão por agora. Lembrar também, galera, quem está aqui de curtir a transmissão, enfim, dar aquela moral, ajuda a gente no canal do YouTube. É, para quem é a família do Luca, enfim, galera, também se inscrever no canal quando a gente for transmitir mais jogos que vocês quiserem ver, para dar notificação e tudo mais. Então, Clica aqui embaixo só para dar uma moral. Então, valeu, vamos para o segundo tempo e esperar voltar o áudio da transmissão, porque eles que cortaram mesmo. Beleza? As good as a way to come back from break as ever, the second half is underway. 
as Rosano whistles. A handful of players for Marshall. A couple have put on some long sleeves as these temperatures have dropped as the sun has gone down. 61 degrees here in Huntington, West Virginia. Me personally, I like the cold weather. It's quarter zip season for me. Plus, it isn't so hot and oppressive, the temperatures, and I'm sure it makes for running around for 90 minutes plus out on a soccer pitch a little bit more enjoyable at least. Good start here to the second half for Kentucky. Wildcats able to win a corner kick. First corner for either side. So right up. Uh, in for Lindau to start the second half as whipping it in, in swinging corner, headed away by Marshall. No cats keep it. So Ryda will flick it back in towards Simla, player on the doorstep. Simla comes out with the punch, and then Stonewall's one, now two chances for Kentucky. Ali Simla coming up huge again. Simla has made at least two saves in every appearance this é, season. É, galera, de novo o goleirão alemão crescendo ali, né? Outra chance saves, and we look at it again muito here. boa de Kentucky, ó. Vamos esperar agora essa primeira. Ó, foi o Lu, próprio Lucas, goal, chutou, ele fechou. Simla, Stonewalls, e nessa first, segunda aí, agarrou de cabeça. Então, quase o gol do Luka, mas é, o goleiro alemão é muito tranquilo. Ele não pula em toda a bola, ele espera, então ele tá sempre inteiro. E acabou pegando, mas boa chance do Luka. Chris Grassi, Marshall's fifth-year coach, has been effusive with his praise of Simla last year, calling him the best keeper in all of Division I. Simla has such a high ceiling, and it's insane to say that about a player who is in his senior season, but Marshall really felt like that he, along with that defense, had room to grow even further from their national championship season. Simla doing his part to keep this score line nil-nil. Three saves now on the night for Ali Simla. Meinhos on this near side. Back to Masi Yunus. Wildcats came up with a late winner in their match against Western Michigan back on September 19th. Their last fixture played. It was a 74th minute winner from Brock Lindau. There's Diaz curling around. Now Marshall, a bright start here to the second half. On the front foot are the herd. Gingerly cleared away by Kentucky, but it lives for Marshall. Talked about it during our intermission report. Marshall outpossessed Kentucky in that opening 45 61 39, including a 27.
14 possession advantage in the final third. They're not able to capitalize on that, though. Nice to send a cross in, and that's stout defending there for Luis Grasso. Bom, galera, voltamos. Teve uma travadinha técnica, acho que foi meu próprio contador. Mas enfim, estamos de volta ao vivo. Já já botei no ao vivo, tá? Do jeito que tá acontecendo. Pelo que eu tava acompanhando, não teve nada muito importante. E agora a marca tava chegando e escanteio que o Vitor Dias vai bater. Já voltamos ao vivo. Bom, galera, voltamos. Teve uma travadinha Dias, who shares corner responsibilities with line host, will send it in from the near flag. In swinging corner. Marshall unable to settle it. Wildcats have done a good job of turning all Marshall's chances away from goal, despite Marshall's hefty lead in possession percentage. Alves again joins the rush. So Rida applies the pressure as he finds it over to Milo Yosef. Now Yosef just a little flick in toward the box. Rodriguez tries to clear it off the volley. And now a whistle and a foul as Alves gets tangled up with the man. Rodriguez puts everything behind that right foot. And boots it away. Karam's all the way back down to Ali Simla after colliding with a couple players. And Simla will roll it out to generate this next Marshall attack. Henry Hurd playing with some renewed tempo here in the second half. That match, really for both sides, started to bog down as the first half went on. We've yet to see things really open up. And now trying to open it up as Diaz thought he had Yosef through. A good clearance there by Kentucky. A nice interception by Bailey Rouse from that center back spot. And now Andrews forward with it. Evans. We'll see who they say it's out on. They say it's last touch by Marshall. So Wildcats will have a throw. Visconti tosses it in. Makes its way to Grasso. So Ryder couldn't settle on it. Fernandez able to win it back for Marshall. Now he'll swing it far side to Alves. Alves tries to join the rush. Nowhere to go for Gabriel Alves. And it finds its way back to Schneider. They'll move, excuse me, they'll move it around, I should say, between the backs. And now Linehost comes up with it. As players collide in Paolo Lino. And Grasso, the junior from Germany. Grasso still down and now up. Wildcats, the fifth top 25 club Marshall have faced this season. It's the earliest in program history they've faced this many ranked squads. It also matches the total for the most ranked clubs faced in a season. That was initially set back in 2006 as the Wildcats, the 10th ranked Kentucky Wildcats, back on it for a moment. They tried to play so right a through, and it was Alves blocking his lane to the ball. That mark set back in 2006 for Marshall. They faced five that season, except all of those came in their final nine fixtures. If FIU can hang into the top 25, Marshall will travel to Miami later this year to take on the Panthers. That would mark six top 25 clubs faced. That would be the most. Really speaks to how difficult of a schedule the Thundering Herd have set themselves up for in their title defense season. Schneider whistled for a foul, went sliding in to keep that alive for Marshall, and Rosano apparently didn't like that. So free kick whistled for to the Wildcats, and we look at it here.
Milo Yosef for Marshall protested. Now heard back on it here. Fernandez couldn't play it through, turned it over in the midfield. And now turning and firing it away is so right up. Marshall again content to survey their options from the back line. Forward to Dolabella. They have Diaz ahead. And now cleared out. Easy clearance for Marie's. Throw quickly taken by Diaz on the herd. Dolabella had it. Back to Diaz and then Fernandez. Dispossessed there by the man in Sorida for Kentucky. And now a whistle brings that to a stop. I believe they set the ball on that pass forward, rolled past the touchline here on the near side. And it, that is what they said. So they give the throw to Marshall. One way Kentucky's approach differs from what we saw from Akron earlier this week. At times, Akron content to send some Navy shirts forward to try to force Marshall into some turnovers when they were handling it on their back line. And you really haven't seen that from Kentucky. Content to let Marshall do that and then force the pressure like that in the midfield. Another takeaway for Kentucky, taken right back away by Colin Masiunis. Bailey Rouse is down for Kentucky, a collision with Masiunis as he'll trot back to his spot. And that stoppage whistled for an injury, not for a foul, I believe is sort of the hands-up motion that Rosano made. Rouse back to his feet. Play resumes after the injury stoppage. That clearance errant there from Hoffelner. We talked about Florida Atlantic. Kentucky will host Florida Atlantic in their final regular season fixture of the year. Marshall will travel to FAU on October 9th. I mentioned that. The Owls were up 1-0 at the break. Second half has started in Norfolk, or excuse me, in Boca Raton, I should say. And the Owls have just added to their lead in the 51st minute. A 2-0 lead. Fired into the box from the far side by screen. And ball played wide of goal on the far side. Simla will have the goal kick. The Owls, though, off to a 4-1-1 one one start. Best six-match start to a season in FAU history. To be third best six-match start, that is. Joey Worthen has done a fantastic job in Boca Raton, one of the younger coaches in Conference USA. He's the first coach since Koss Donov to post three straight years for the Owls of four or more wins. They're the 26th best scoring offense in the nation, our Florida Atlantic. As mentioned, up 2-0 on Old Dominion. A 61st-minute goal for the Owls. And jogging toward the substitution area on the near side, Eitor Bjorgelsen, the junior from Jesheim, Norway, Thought we would see Bjorgelsen start in this match. He did not as a whistle and a foul from Rosano. That will bring the cheers out from the home supporters. And also a protest from Pedro Dolabella. As Diaz trots back down the pitch and shakes his head. We see the replay here. Diaz sticking that left foot out extended. Fans may disagree, but it puts the ref in a difficult spot there when 
You see that collision with the shin pads and a player goes down. It was Meinzer that went down. So a good shot there of Bjorgelson, the 2020 Conference USA third teamer. Bjorgelson, a big boost to this Kentucky attack when he comes in seven points in his last four appearances. Ball finds its way to Evans. Shot sent toward goal. And Ali Simla is there closing off the near side as it P rolls into his mitts and he'll roll it back out. Stepping up and intercepting that, Visconti, the Clemson transfer. And Visconti comes back and turns it over. Was flanked there by Marise to his left on the near side and a little too much weight behind that pass. Marcel Meinzer all over the pitch, wins one back in the defensive third. Very nearly a good recovery by Max Schneider, able to come over and just guide it back. Simla forward to Alves. Alves, plenty of space to move. And now slows up in the midfield. Forward to Yosef. Yosef plays it back to Masayunas. Wildcats again with another interception. That's the name of the game, and the Wildcats in this second half have done an outstanding job. Bird again will generate the attack from the back. This time it's Schneider forward to Dos Santos. Joseph turned away again by this Kentucky midfield. No cats calm and poised in that midfield as Fernandez trips up Evans. Free kick awarded, and they try to take it quickly. And instead, urged on by Settergren, where Gafford to sort of just slow up and let things develop back forward. We look at the foul again. Since coming in, Daniel Evans has really been a thorn in Marshall's side. A couple good defensive runs to start this second half. The flag is up on the free kick. Evans has turned in a solid shift. 36 minutes played after coming on as a sub in the late stages of that first half. Masayunas, no options forward for the herd. They go forward to Yosef now as they find a lane. Yosef into a little bit of space. Left off to Fernandez now. Perhaps something here for Marshall, seeking the opening goal of this match. Still nil-nil as the second half carries on. Diaz tightly contested there by Visconti. Fans wanted a foul here in Huntington. Marshall will go back to Masayunas, turned away on this near side. They'll swing it, or at least thought about swinging it to the far side and trying their hand from that angle of attack. Guided back to Dos Santos, and they find Dolabella. Yosef forward. Fernandez tried to one-touch it ahead to Lino. Short clearance, and that is where... So Rida comes up with it, heads it away, and then Yosef gives chase. Wildcats will have the throw. And this stoppage will bring about enough change, and that is where Itor Bjorgelson, the 2020 Conference USA third teamer, will trot onto the pitch. Out comes Daniel Evans, turned in a good shift there. 38 minutes for Evans. One shot and a couple good defensive plays. 
Jorgelson, fifth in Conference USA in goals, has a point in three of his last four appearances and 10 points in his last 14 league appearances. A huge boost to this Kentucky attack, seeking their first goal of this match, trying to break through the scoreless deadlock. Marshall will have it back. It's to Dos Santos. Finds Masiunis. Some space to move ahead. Line host Diaz. They've done a good job of marking Vitor Diaz this evening. It really hasn't mattered who they put on him. That defender has done a nice job of trying to limit his touches in this match. Yosef turns on the Jets down the far side. Line host joins the rush. Space to move. Has a go of it, goes toward goal, and it carries off his right foot high over the crossbar, out for a goal kick to Hoffelner. Two more changes made by Johan Settergren. Jansen Wilson on as we see a look at the replay here. You saw Linehouse's reaction as soon as that shot left his foot. Very upset with his effort there. There's a look at Jansen Wilson, the junior, comes up. Marshall fans familiar with that 11 shirt made famous by the now departed Jamil Roberts. Golden goal in the national title match against Indiana back in May. Three straight match winners to close a storied career for Roberts.
Top of the box, Dolabella gives one up to Yosef. A chance here for Marshall. And Rodriguez, a sliding block of the shot, will concede a corner to the herd. No, excuse me. It will give a goal kick é, to Kentucky. Luca bloqueou bem essa bola agora. E galera, só mandar um salve pro Lucas Costa, Lucas Magno, que foi o Fato da Tanoz, foi o Tadir, jogou Naya, jogou Junior College, jogou D2, e hoje and ele é assistente da, eu peguei o nome aqui so pra não errar, da Schiffersburg University, da equipe feminina, e eles jogaram hoje contra a número 4 do país, e perderam de 1 a 0 só, então deve ter sido jogaço, e é uma faculdade de nível muito bom no futebol feminino, e o Lucas está começando a trajetória dele como treinador, então, abração, Lucão, valeu e parabéns também pelo resultado, né, não foi a vitória, mas é, é um resultado específico, jogar contra o número 4 do país e ter um jogo parelho. No mais é isso, bola muito boa do Pedro Labella para o Milo, só que o Lucas estava atento, se ele consegue botar essa bola ali para trás, provavelmente alguém ia... Chegar completando, então, UK, é, jogaço, continuando muito bom o jogo, e faltando 19 minutos. Pra quem não sabe, a família do Luca, que tá acompanhando agora, se o jogo acabar no tempo normal empatado, 0x0, 1x1, sempre vai ter prorrogação, a prorrogação são dois tempos de 10 minutos com um gol de ouro, se alguém fizer o um gol, acaba. Então, continuando empatado, a gente tem dois tempos de 10 minutos. Se no final do segundo tempo de 10 minutos continuar empatado, aí sim a partida é decretada empate e aí acaba empatado com um ponto para cada. Então, estamos encaminhando, encaminhando a partida para o overtime. Mais tempo para a gente assistir nossos brasileiros por lá. Fechado? Valeu, abraço, galera. E abraço, Lucão, também. Fernandes, 71 minutos played. Um bom trabalho de limitar ele. Não shots, just um foul. Wildcats and Screen will toss it in. Screen has played all 90 minutes three times this year, making his sixth start and his last seven appearances in a black and blue shirt. Joseph swings past one defender, a second, and now a third. Left off to Dolabella in space. Dolabella looking for goal, and from a distance, Dolabella unable to get a real good touch on that. See Dolabella centered in your screen in the tin shirt for Marshall. Not thrilled with his effort there. Offelner boots it away. And off the back of Wilson, who was down. Dos Santos tried to clear it. Now rainbowed around a defender in Mainzer. Diaz had it. Marshall now will settle on it in the midfield. And Yosef just pushed that a little too far ahead of him. Screen doing a good job on Yosef, working on him. Yosef, though, good defensive run, comes out of a crowd with it. Marshall have it now, carrying it forward. As Souza surveys his options. Errant pass from Linehouse, caroms to the feet of Bjorgelson. And Kentucky have won the ball back. A nice flick ahead, foot race here, Bjorgelson and Dos Santos. No one will win that, and it will go to the thundering herd. Look here at the replay. You heard a couple of jeers there from the home supporters. As Bjorkelson and Dos Santos tied up at the end. Dos Santos wanted a foul. Nice long ball played forward to line host, just unable to settle with the right boot. And it's out for a goal kick to Hoffelner. John Eric Linehouse, third most minutes played on the squad a season ago, played over 1,600 minutes. Three out of his four goals on the campaign were on PKs last year. Five for five on those PKs in his last two seasons as Jan-Erik Leinhos 
two assists this season. Whistle and a foul. Wildcats will have a free kick. Grasso set to take this free kick for Kentucky. 6-1 junior. Sends it toward the top of the box. Met there by a host of green and white shirts. And now a whistle and a foul against Kentucky. Marshall will have the free kick, and it's quickly taken. Undering her tails up now here. Trying to move forward with some pace. Alves has to double back. Turned away by Holstad. And a whistle on that play comes back. Holstad whistled for the foul. Florida Atlantic has tacked on a third to their total. It's Old Dominion in the 71st minute now. Owls all over the Monarchs, 3-0. Lighthouse will play Sosa through. Sosa whips it into a dangerous area. No one on the receiving end for Marshall, and it's poked out by Screen. Wildcats trying to counterattack here. Screen a little too much behind that lead pass, looking for Bjorgelson, and it finds its way to Dos Santos instead. Speaking of 3-0 leads, the 49ers in the 78th minute have a 3-0 lead over South Carolina. So both Charlotte and Florida Atlantic look in prime position to pick up their first full set of points in the table this evening. And as Martin Sorida, the freshman from Jessheim, Norway, will come back on off trots Robert Marie's. Green triggers it in off the throw in. And it finds its way back to Masa Yunus. Back ahead, looking for Joke this time, and it's cleared away by Kentucky. Yosef will keep it in. Crowd here in Huntington, West Virginia. It's going to become a little more lively on the edge of their seats. Hoping these Marshall possession numbers pay off. Dolabella had space in the midfield. That evaporated. Now Schneider tries to play one through to Souza, and too much behind that for Joao Souza. Marshall Athletics is streaming once again this fall on ESPN Plus and the ESPN app to keep tabs on news, notes, and live broadcasts. Download the ESPN app in your phone's app store by searching ESPN. The ESPN app. One app, one tap. Wildcats will have the throw in on this near side. Mason Visconti, the senior from Kansas City, Missouri. Now it's one back by Marshall. Slow roller into the middle to Yosef. Now forward to Alves, who joins the rush. Alves will carry it into space. Marshall again approaching the final third. Turned away is Diaz. Rouse with that clearance. Yosef, a little flick on ahead. Souza is onside. And Souza just can't take the touch. Tries to cross it back in to Jope on the far post. That developed quickly for Marshall. Kentucky felt as though it was offside. And it looks as though Kentucky may have been right. 
The flag is up here on this near side, but I think it's more for the assistant referee pointing that that is a goal kick saying that that ball carom passed the end line. Johan Sedergren stood in the technical area with his arm pointed to the right, motioning toward the assistant referee for what felt like 45, 50 seconds before Esteban Rosano finally took notice. Play back underway. Again, Marshall able to win it back. Momentum starting to shift perhaps to the thundering herd. Defensively in the midfield, they now starting to force turnovers. Yosef taking it deep in the corner. Running out of room is Milo Yosef. And it will be a wildcat throw. Whistle and a foul stoppage from Rosano. It'll be a free kick given to Kentucky as Rosano has a word with Milo Yosef. The herd number five in the latest top 25 poll. This is the highest ranked club Kentucky have faced away since playing to a nil-nil draw at number four Indiana back on October 9th, 2019. And their last four fixtures against the top five UK are one, one, and two. That one win, though, a big one, came back in 2018 against then number two, Indiana. They find Bjorgolfsson inside the box. Tries to play one back heel to Holstad, and Marshall's defense bend but don't break. They recover nicely, and Simla scoops it up. Here at the replay, Bjorgelson tried the cheeky little back heel play to Holstad, but it was defended well by Schneider. <laughs> Santos will swing it back to Max Schneider. Tried to play through to Yosef, and it was behind him, taken away by screen. And now played back forward as Holstad will track that one down. Well, Cats don't have the numbers advantage, but they had some options, and they dissipated quickly. Taken away by Nathan Dos Santos, steps up as Holstad went to the turf. And Marshall back on it here. Sosa will weave through and leave it off for Linehouse. Now Souza, product of the Orlando City Academy, Orlando City of the MLS. Now ahead, finds Yosef. Had Alves on the overlap and hits his man in stride. Wildcats set to make two changes at the next juncture. It'll be Daniel Evans and Maurice coming back on. And the flag is up. And we'll give possession back to Kentucky. Free kick upcoming. Thundering well well no. Herd, a robust 12 3 and 3 mark since 2019 against ranked foes. They've won seven of their last 10 against top 25 clubs, but against the top 10 is where they've struggled at times. Two, four, and three under Grassy against top 10 ranked clubs. They've been outscored 10 to five in that span and kept off the scoreline three times. Thundering Herd now moving forward with some pace. Looking to make sure they don't get kept off the scoreline. They hit Yosef in stride and Screen comes over and just that little right foot to disrupt that as it's cleared away and Wildcats believe well hold everything I don't want to misspeak so after some conversation it will be a free kick for Kentucky
Meinzer with it. Marcel Meinzer. One of the familiar names in this Kentucky 11. Mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. 52 of his last 53 appearances. He's been in the starting 11. On pace to play every minute for the fourth consecutive match as Marcel Meinzer as he swings it back to the near side. Visconti with it. Back to Meinzer now. Meinzer. Thought he had options. Tried to turn on the ball and overran the ball. Masiunas finds its way back to Dos Santos. Now forward to Alves. Alves will flick it in toward the middle. And it was looked like right on Diaz. And Diaz watched it sail out. It will be a throw for Kentucky. And now Marshall will make a change of their own as the Wildcats will make three. Dan G back on along with Evans and Marie's. Alex Jetty, the Virginia Tech transfer, on for Marshall. As Bjorgelson will come off. 22 minutes played for Itor Bjorgelson. Alves comes off for the herd. Some fresher legs on for both sides here in the late late stages of this match we're past the 85th minute in Huntington West Virginia and neither side has been able to find what would you think be the goal that would push them across the finish line intercepted by Marie's in the midfield now Evans crosses over past Masi Yunus tried to dribble it into space and now a whistle and a foul Free kick quickly taken by Dos Santos, or excuse me, Dos Santos just playing it back to Schneider to spot it for the free kick. Come on, boys. Joseph forward, something developing here for Marshall. And the flag comes up near side. We'll wipe that chance out for the herd. And now a wildcat is down behind the play. Hard to see who that is from this angle. Nonetheless, it brings the training staff out. Looks like that might be Marcel Meinzer. Like a great crowd on hand here in Huntington, West Virginia. They have been real lively at times. I haven't had much to cheer for. There's been a lack of offense in this one, but we knew that coming in. We knew this was going to be a defensive rock fight. As in Columbia, South Carolina, the match, the match between Charlotte and South Carolina has gone final. 49ers pick up their fifth win of the year, first in conference play. And as it stands right now, Charlotte in sole possession of second place in the league table in terms of a live league table. Full set of points earned by Kevin Langan's 49ers. Perhaps that will be what Langan and that staff are looking for. Mentioned coming in, just a 4-2-0 mark for Charlotte. Somewhat disappointing if you're a 49ers fan. Daniel Kuzimka for the 49ers gets the clean sheet. We had a nice match in net for Charlotte. Speaking of Conference USA matches, FIU and UAB, they enter the intermission scoreless nil-nil in Birmingham. 
Birmingham has sort of been a house of horrors for FIU. They're on a six-match win streak against the Blazers, but they've lost three of their last seven at UAB away. Marshall trying to develop something here, and Souza goes down. Soza back to Linehouse. Now Linehouse forward to Diaz, locked up there in a battle with Grasso. Diaz back on it now. Again, Kentucky trying to turn Diaz away from streaking toward goal. This time it was Marie's. They'll go back to Diaz a third time. This time left off for Schneider as a sliding challenge comes in from Marie's. Diaz shakes free of a one defender. Muscle to the turf is Vitor Diaz. Fans protest the no-call in Huntington. The Jetty gives it up to Yosef, developing quickly here for the herd. Low cross cleared away by Kentucky. Now Yosef tries to cross it in again, this time to Dolabella, and it's turned away by UK. Flicked into the box toward Chope by Linehouse, and again cleared away by the Wildcats. That time, Rodriguez, a decisive clearance for UK. 89th minute in Huntington as the fans rise to their feet. Marshall, one last gasp. They give it up in the final third. So Rhino will clear it away. Errant clearance. From the freshman from Norway, Marshall will have a throw in. Roughly a half minute away from a full-time whistle to signify the end of regulation. Linehouse goes down. Kentucky able to win it back. Now can the Wildcats turn something into nothing here at the gun? Flicked ahead toward Evans. And Masiunis will beat Simla to the ball and clear it out. Into Visconti. And that is how regulation will end in Huntington, West Virginia for the third consecutive, or excuse me, second time in the last three matches, that is. Marshall will need extra time in Huntington. We'll have to break and return for the start of the first golden goal extra time session. Nil-nil through 90 minutes. A 6-3 advantage in shots for Kentucky. 4-0 in shots on goal. Not enough for the Wildcats. We'll be back on ESP+. 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 Aí é decretado o empate final. Então vou deixar a transmissão aí, eles só vão conversar dentro do campo, não sai para o vestiário. E aí começa já direto, dois tempos de 10 minutos normais. Fez o gol, acabou. Fechado? E falando do jogo agora, é, de novo, Marshall muito mais com posse de bola, mas no segundo tempo conseguiu traduzir um pouco mais em chances. Então, Luca foi importantíssimo para Kentucky na zaga, estava cortando muito essa bola no chão, porque, de novo, a Marshall não é um time alto. Então, eles atacam a linha de fundo, mas sempre rola a bola por trás no chão. Eles não botam a bola aérea, não dão chuveiro na área, porque não tem é, ninguém muito alto, só o Pedro do Labela quando chega por trás. Então, acho que o Luca entendeu isso. Toda bola que o Milo chegava na linha de fundo, tentava dar pelo chão, o Luca estava cortando. Até agora, última jogada da marcha, quem cortou foi o Luca. Da marcha, muito bem, como sempre. O Vitor Dias, muito bem. O Pedro Dolabella tem muito bem. É, o Vinícius estava bem, entrou o João bem também. O Gabriel na lateral esquerda é muito consistente também. Saiu no finalzinho para botar poder ofensivo. Então, tiraram o Gabriel o lateral esquerdo para botar outro atacante, opção do treinador, não foi porque ele estava tendo uma partida ruim. É, então é isso, só agora a galera conversar bem rápido, ó, os juízes estão aí no campo, já vai começar direto o overtime, fez o gol, acabou, deu vitória, 
se não, dois tempos de 10 minutos acabando o empate, aí realmente é o um empate, como esse jogo é de conferência, aí vale aquele um ponto para cada time. Beleza? Vou deixar rodando por aí. E é isso. Valeu. Lembrar também quem tá aí que ainda é, curtir a transmissão e se inscrever no canal, porque isso ajuda bastante a gente. A gente costuma transmitir os jogos da marcha, porque o Pedro Alabella sempre me manda os links. É da de Kentucky, eu já conversei com o Luca, tem aquela bloqueio um pouco do da ESPN para o Brasil, então é um pouco mais difícil, mas é, se a gente conseguir mais jogos, a gente também vai transmitir. Agora é só definir o lado, tá lá o Pedro do Alabelo, o capitão Back da Marshall, e o Virginia, capitão nil, de nil Kentucky. Então já vai começar o segundo tempo. Segundo tempo não, o overtime. Para os que new to college soccer or the casual fan of collegiate men's football, we explain the overtime rules to you now. They'll put 10 minutes on the clock, They'll play one period of what's called golden goal extra time, which means whoever scores first is the winner. If that oh, o cara tá explicando o que eu acabei de explicar da, the da regra. If there is no score after acabou, 10 minutes, they will take another acabar, intermission aí é brief, empate. and they'll go to a second golden goal extra time period. If there is no decisive winner after that, that's the match. These teams will share the points in the league table. Each team would get one, a winner, gets all three points in the league table. It's been an exciting match so far here in Huntington, West Virginia. 6-3 advantage in shots for the Wildcats. 4-0 on goal. But Ali Simla, four big saves, including that sequence where he stonewalled UK right on the doorstep. That really the turning point of this match. A great number of fans on hand for the start of extra time in Huntington, West Virginia. The second time in three matches, Marshall will have needed extra time. Mason Visconti, 90 minutes played for the Clemson transfer. Previous season high was 80 minutes against Duquesne just two matches ago. As the horn sounds and we are prepped for the start of ET on Marshall, sends it away and we are underway. Yosef carries it forward. Now back to Yosef from Dolabella. Played into space now to Linehos. Linehos finds Diaz. Marshall inching toward the final third, trying to get Diaz through. Bright start here for the herd. His next goal wins it in Huntington. Flicked on to Diaz. Maurice. In lockstep with him. Nice little poke out there with the right foot by Maurice. Able to disrupt that, and Marshall will have a throw in on this near side. Throw finds its way to Diaz. Back to line host, the throw taker. Now whipped into the middle to Dos Santos. Marshall, they want to change the angle of the attack, and they cannot clear it away. Ahead to Souza. Souza wanted Diaz. Telegraph that pass. Wheeler steps up and dislodges that. Or excuse me, that was Rouse that was. Now Diaz. Pressured from behind by Meinzer. Meinzer stays down. And now Rosano will bring an end to this rush for Marshall. Milo Yosef not exactly thrilled about that. Meinzer is down.
Meinzer will step to his feet, was clutching the left calf. as though things will resume off a drop ball. Chris Grassy on this near side, having words to say the least with Van Gaston, the alternate official. Take a look at it from our field view here. Diaz a little overrun. Mines are able to knock that away. And then Diaz, he did get the ball on his first effort of a challenge, which is why no foul was given, but Mineser stayed down after the play. Kept alive by Maurice as he hoofs it back down. Bjorgolfsson in for extra time. And now Bjorgolfsson unmarked on goal. And Simla again slams the door shut. Masayuna struggled with the control on it. Had Bjorgolfsson bearing down on him. And I tore Bjorgolfsson. Nearly ended this one for Kentucky. Ali Simla stepping up big. The advantage in shots on frame grows for the Wildcats. 5 nothing. It does concede a corner to Kentucky. Black and blue shirts come forward. Screen will take it from the near flag. Fires it in, in swinging. Simla came out with the punch. And it's out to Visconti. Visconti tries a seeing eye shot. And Visconti goes down, no foul given in the box, but now the Wildcats cranking é, up the pressure in extra time. Da do Visconti goes down again, has a word with Rosano on his way back down. Do goleiro alemão. And now então, Josef gets tied up também. with Grasso. Estão chutando em cima dele, ele tá ficando todas, tá batendo tudo no peito dele, parece que estão é, mirando Fans lá. to their feet, and things are devolving into chaos in Huntington. And now some pushing and some shoving here. This could get ugly fast. Galera, e lembrando que no esporte universitário, as well. coaches eles estavam tendo uma espécie de VAR words. só para lances, é, como pode se dizer, lances de atitude, enfim, de violência, algo assim. Não sei se nesse jogo está tendo isso. Well, look here at the replay. Foi isso, o alemão caiu ali, as aí tentou levantar, puxaram ele, or, enfim. Say, Grasso went careening into é, não sei Joseph. se nesse jogo está tendo VAR para questão disciplinar, isso que eu ia falar, para questão disciplinar, em alguns jogos eles estavam usando o vídeo, não in. sei se vão usar ou não. E isso é onde as coisas foram downhill. Mas também, sinceramente, não foi para tudo isso, né? Acho que a galera já tava mais nervos à flor da pele ali, porque não foi nada demais. O cara caiu, o outro segurou, enfim, coisa normal. Well, we never advertised this as a friendly. These two teams, anytime they lock up, it has been a hard-fought, tight battle. And when you play a team as many times as these two sides have met up, 36 prior times, there's bound to be some nastiness inherently in a series like this. Wildcats felt hard done by the officiating last year in Lexington. Had an early goal wiped out by offside. Marshall came back and ended up winning it. And now the cards will be produced by Rosano. So, Yosef and Grasso looks as though that pair will be both shown yellow.
And Marshall's Chris Grassi continuing to protest to both Gaston and Rosano. As Rosano shakes his head, Wildcats will have a free kick. And Chris Grassi has to watch himself here. So 94th minute yellow shown to Yosef and Grasso. Green will take this free kick for Kentucky as it angles toward the top of the box, and now Joe has it. Looking for a jetty as Meinzer collides with a jetty, and this may be a quick card here from Rosano trying to get this match back under control, and it will be. Marcel Meinzer is shown yellow. I think no matter which side of the ledger you fall on, you have to agree that might be sound officiating from Rosano. A foul directly after that scrum we just saw. You have to show yellow in order to try to get things back under control if you're this officiating crew. And now Schneider goes down. Marshall will have the throw near side. Schneider slow to get up. Or to be free kick, I should say. Look at the replay as Maurice just stuck the foot in and Schneider got tripped up. I will say, though, about that scrum, the little extracurricular activity, I am a little surprised that just yellow was shown, just based on how these officials have tried to officiate this match. Nonetheless, we play on as the Wildcats back on it. Joseph forward gives it up to a jetty. Masiunas finds line host. Feels like this first session of extra time should be over with by now, but we had that prolonged stoppage to sort things out earlier. Now back to Yosef. They try to go forward again, this time to Jope, and it's cleared away. Jope goes down, and Marshall will have a throw. FIU, the nation's 23rd ranked club, have just found a 49th minute goal on the road at Birmingham to go up 1-0 over UAB. A player is down for Kentucky. Looks like that might be so right up. Look here at the replay of it. He just collided with the back. Schneider at least say, turned his back, trying to make a play with the ball. They collided. So Ryder went down. And he continues to make the argument that that should be something shown to Max Schneider. Now so Ryder having words with Rosano after his ruling.
This first session of extra time has just been sheer chaos. Maybe some frustrations from a lack of scoring starting to bubble over as this match continues on. Whatever it may be. And now we have a discussion here. It looks like it might be Chase Weidelman, the assistant coach for Kentucky, having a word with Van Gaston. And clock, the clock, I should say, continues to run. And it looks like we may be waiting on the clock to get adjusted as some considerable time ran off there during that stoppage. But nonetheless, play resumes. They put three five five back on the clock. As Linehouse's pass intercepted, it now returns the favor. Ahead to Yosef. Feels like at stages Marshall have dominated possession, but just nothing to show for it. In terms of nothing to show for it, Kentucky, five shots on goal, none for Marshall, but whipped into the dangerous area that is inside the six. They had Jope streaking toward goal and finally decisively cleared away by Kentucky. One back, though, by Marshall. Diaz tangled up with Mariz, and he wins that ball back. Long ball played forward. Bjorgolfsson. Down goes Masi Yunus. High tour Bjorgolfsson gets whistled for that foul. And the free kick will have to be retaken. Colin Masi Yunus is down. Colin Masiunis is still down. Chris Grassi stepped down on the pitch to check on him. Galera, lembrando também que o pessoal que tá caindo, enfim, cera ou não, o tempo no overtime, sempre que o juiz achar que é algo que vai gastar tempo, enfim, que seja cera ou algo do tipo, ele para o relógio, então você pode ver aqui em cima que está em 2h45, então não adianta aí fazer cera, querer enrolar. O jeito mais fácil de enrolar é ficar tocando a bola, enfim, levar a bola para o ataque, mas as duas equipes ainda parecem que querem ganhar o jogo, mas fazer cera, ficar no chão, atendimento, tudo, o relógio para. Bater escanteio, o cara demorar para ir bater escanteio, ele pode falar o relógio, então eles controlam um pouco disso, então... É isso, tá rodando aí o tempo, mas o tempo tá parado. About how this match has carried on through this extra time session. And Masa Yunus will race back off, race back on. After coming off for the injury. So that is good news if you're a Marshall fan. Now Linehouse forward with it, finds Souza. Looking back across Conference USA, FIU have doubled their advantage on the road at UAB. They go forward to Diaz again. Diaz comes up lame, clutching the right foot. Pressure applied from behind by Grasso. 
Now left off for screen as Diaz is still behind the play. They'll go back to Meinzer as there's nowhere to go forward with it. Visconti. Now Grasso as Jope stuck the foot in to disrupt that. Visconti will throw it in for Kentucky. For Bjorgolfsson. Now Souza over to Diaz, tried to flick it ahead. Dolabella will hoof it high into the air. Teams trading possessions here, and now Kentucky starts to settle on it a little bit as Bjorgolfsson had it. Diaz and Maurice on this near touchline. Maurice whistled for the foul. So Diaz able to win a free kick, and he'll swing it over to Milo Yosef. Played nearly 100 minutes. No winner has been found so far. 8-3 advantage in shots. And one shot on frame taken in this extra time period by Kentucky. Widens that goal. 5-0 advantage in shots on goal. Wildcats now here. As running out of room, Marie's. They do say it went out. Valiant effort by Maurice, trying to keep it in. Just ran out of room. And so it looks as though we will head to a second extra time period. One last chance here for Marshall. Heard at the gun. Diaz puts a shot on goal. And coming up big, Hoffelner keeps Kentucky in this match. Marshall have found their first shot on goal. But the graduate transfer keeper... Rejects Vitor Diaz. A hundred minutes, not enough. Although it nearly was. We will head back to break on ESPN Plus and return for the start of the second extra time session. A probing ball by Milo Yosef. Omashiko nearly ends it. É isso, quase que o Vitor Dias faltando dois segundos, ia ser até postagem para a gente falar, porque o relógio é exatamente assim, o Milo cruzou, a bola estava no ar, enfim, mas quando chega no zero, ele toca o, o, o sino, né, e acaba o jogo onde estava, cabeceou bem, tentou botar no contrapé, eu acho que se ele botasse, cabeceasse baixo na direita ali, o goleiro não pegaria talvez, mas enfim, o goleiro se posicionou bem. É, e é isso, mais 10 minutos e agora é aquilo que eu falei um pouco antes. Acabando 0x0, aí sim é empate, mas também mantém o gol de ouro. Agora qualquer gol acaba a partida. E agora é um intervalo até menor, só estou conversando aí no meio de campo. Já Hi, hello. Pro segundo Here's tempo. Jason. Hello. Testing, testing. Back on ESPN Plus, it's the first extra time match between Kentucky and Marshall all the way back to October 6th, 2010. Ten minutes away from these sides sharing the points. That man right there, Jan Hoffelner, the graduate senior transfer from St. John's, 
the biggest stop of the night kept Kentucky alive in this as Vitor Diaz put a header marked for goal on net in the waning seconds of extra time one. And the whistle sounds from Rosano. We are back underway. A hundred minutes, not enough in Huntington. Aside from that prolonged stoppage due to the scuffle around the midway mark of that first extra time session, Marshall really controlled the possession numbers. We'll see if it's Kentucky's turn now to control the pace of play and the second extra time. Wildcats on it now. They have the throw. Finds its way to Marie's. Marie's will earn Kentucky a corner kick. Just their third corner of this match. And no, it'll actually be a goal kick. The official looked as though he initially pointed toward the corner. Now instead it's a goal kick as Simla will carry it forward. As Santos will swing it to the outside to Linehouse. It's not a pinpoint pass from Dos Santos to Linehouse. Couldn't get to it. It sails out and Scream will toss it in from the far side for Kentucky. Screen will fire it ahead and stride finds Andrews could settle there with the left boot flick back on ahead to Sorida Sorida trying to swing past Milo Yosef and he goes down does Milo Yosef foul given Yosef slow to get up Marshall will have a free kick just a hard fought battle there those two have locked up at times throughout this match prior Schneider looks ahead to a jetty near side. A jetty will race past Robert Screen and now back into the middle of the Jope, top of the box. Dios with it now into Jope toward goal and just cannot finish. Chance unable to be taken by Marshall. A delightful setup from the herd and Ibrahima Jope, incredulous. A look at the replay. Dios, nifty move laterally. The short side was open, and Jope unable é, to take novo, that chance. Que não pode perder. Que jogada do Vitor Dias, né? Mas o, o atacante o nove, ele acho que ele deu uma afobada. Se ele deixa a bola passar um pouco mais, ele pega bem de direita. Ele tem que pegar reto, pegou no calcanhar now, dele, sei lá, foi toda a torta, né? A fogo, você espera meio segundo aí a bola passa um pouco mais e ele pega melhor. Mas jogadaço do Vitor Dias, de novo, hoje pra mim ele é o melhor da marcha em campo e de Kentucky também. Concordo que o Luca no setor defensivo foi o melhor de Kentucky também, minha opinião. Line host with speed will carry it forward. Has some options on the attack, turned away by Kentucky. And now Marshall back on it. It's Souza. So Labella forced to double back. Now swing it to Yosef near side now. Tried to play it through, looking for a jetty. Jope will catch up to it. It's loose still. Jope able to win it back for Marshall. Now poked ahead by Dolabella. Felt the footsteps from behind by Marcel Meinzer. And now Meinzer will hoof one ahead in the vicinity there of Luke Andrews, but there were two green and white shirts on him. Heard tails up here, racing forward with it. Yosef will slice back in the middle, has a go of it, and that sails high on Yosef over the bar.
That's about the second or third time Marshall have had a rush developing and had a ball sail high on them on a chance on goal. Evans will come back on. Out comes Andrews. A look at the Yosef chance. Offelner sends it away off the goal kick. Evans over there on the far side battling for it. Now Mariz comes out of a crowd with it. Tries to double it back to a teammate. Telegraph that pass was, but a good sliding challenge from Marcel Meinzer. Beautiful defensive play. Wildcats back on it now. Evans sidesteps past Diaz. And Evans... Outrunning the Marshall back line. Giving up to Bjorgolfsson in the box. Nowhere to move with it for Bjorgolfsson. Short clearance for Marshall. Meinzer keeps it alive for Kentucky. Wildcats trying the tiki-taka passing. That's unsuccessful. Intercepted by Marshall. And now Jope on it. Ahead. A jetty. Just couldn't settle it on the near side. Wildcats will quickly take the throw. Yosef dispossessed on the near side. Marshall will have a throw as Meinzer is down and a stoppage is whistled for for the injury. Joseph will help Meinzer to his feet. Clay Holstad will come on to relieve the injured man. Joseph's throw goes into Dos Santos. In seventh minute in Huntington, West Virginia. No winner to be had at this point. Marshall Lowe maybe knocking on the doorstep. Good battle developing on the far side between Visconti and Souza. Souza running out of room. E faltando well, três minutos para acabar o jogo. Também é legal apontar que de volume de jogo acho difícil. É, comparar, enfim, a Marshall consegue segurar mais a bola, dá para ver que no meio campo tem mais qualidade, mas quem tá indo pela marca é impressionante, é o sétimo partido com só dois gols sofridos, então dois gols sofridos em sete partidas, mostra que é uma das melhores defesas do país, e defesas, costumam falar lá nos Estados Unidos, que defesas ganham o campeonato, então, é um ponto muito positivo, para quem tá aqui ano passado, a defesa de Marshall foi muito boa também, no campeonato nacional dele. Licks one in toward Holstad. A jetty. No foul given. Marshall one and one as a jetty got tangled up in midair with a man. And it's cleared out off the boot of Milo Yosef. Screen was the one who sent it out, but it touched Yosef on its way out. And now Kentucky. Trying to burn a little bit more time off this clock. Whistle and a foul. Schneider whistled for it. Adamantly disagrees with it. And now the Wildcats will have a free kick. Green will put everything behind this, waving players forward. As Grasso tried to head it back toward goal. 
60 seconds away from a full-time result here in Huntington, West Virginia. Yosef will poke that away. One last ditch effort here for the herd as they win it back. The Jetty will leave it off for DeSantos. Half minute remaining in this match until Rosano whistles for full time. Deflected out by Kentucky. Evans will try to track that down and immediately a clock stoppage motion for Dos Santos near side as Evans chases it down. Punched out there by the keeper and Hoffelner. And the Wildcats now racing forward with pace. A sliding challenge comes in from Dos Santos, and that will do it in Huntington. A full-time result between Kentucky and Marshall. They play to a nil-nil draw. The first time since October 18th, 2006, That these side é isso, galera. Empatado um ponto, um ponto para cada. É legal ver que a galera tá exausto. O Pedro do Alabella, Vitor Dias, Kentucky o Luca jogaram o jogo inteiro. Então foram 90 minutos mais dois tempos de é exaustivo no nível do college com um jogo muito intenso. Agradecer a todo mundo que tava aí com a gente. Lembrar de dar o like e inscrever. Enfim, é o Max Kentucky. tá nervoso, o alemão. E é isso, empate, esse jogo era muito importante para a classificação, mas bem provavelmente as duas equipes vão passar para os playoffs e talvez se encontrem no mata-mata. Mas é isso. valeu galera, boa noite, vou deixar o final da transmissão rodando, mas já vou saindo por aqui, o Gabriel está ali, ele conhece a galera de Kentucky, é muito amigo do, do Luca. Lembrar de curtir, se inscrever aqui, valeu para todo mundo, boa noite e valeu. Marshall nil, Kentucky nil. A reminder that this, as well as all other broadcasts airing on ESPN Archive on the ESPN app, this has been a presentation of ESPN.